Here's high kick out towards the wing. Humphrey in chase. It's kept in play. Humphrey can run onto this. He's got Hill clear, but just beaten by the boundary line. And Hill really was away had that ball stayed in play. Boundary throw in. Dean gets up high, uncontested. Handball's nowhere. Cooney couldn't get it. Wilton did it well. He's been terrific early. The ball to Wade and just off hands for another throw in. Past 10 minutes in the first quarter of the 1994 Grand Final. Clarence 3-1, you Norfolk a goal. Clarence kicking with a 5 or 6 goal breeze. Holdsworth couldn't get the kick. Cullen towards Wade. Fresh air shot missed. He goes again. Lost it. And the boundary line wins out. Brett Morby played in North Hobart's 1989 Premiership side. Richard Hill in two North Hobart Premierships. Stevie Wright, busy early. Wilton going back with courage. Oh, tremendous effort. Jason Wilton, but it's not being rewarded. The free kick going to Donato for something that happened off the ball. Donato out wide to Wade. He'll get shepherded by Jones. Wade bombs away towards the goal square. No one there for Clarence. And the only player back there is Craig Stevenson from New Norfolk, the centre half back. Richie playing in the forward line today. Dak up towards, not Dak, Stevenson up towards the wing, taken by the Roos. Winter. Oh, he does that beautifully. Went to the sidestep a ripper. The kick pretty poor, though. And it's all New Norfolk back here. We'll restart things. Craig Stevenson round towards the wing. It's kick to kick at the moment, but chopped off by a white late on the scene. He did it pretty well. See, Darren Winter's got some fans out there, hasn't he, Rob? Every time he goes near the ball, there's a reaction. It's a boundary throw in. The ball's on the deck. Holdsworth couldn't get rid of it. Jones, his rush kick forward into the forward pocket. Players quite happy to see that go out of play for a restart. Change of career for Michael Gary by the looks of things. He's joining the US Marines. <laughs> ball up. Underneath the pack, Morby. Been, been one of the better players. Out for Lee Horn. Threw it away. Deniman caught with the ball. Trapped up by Holdsworth. Both Holdsworth and Deniman doing a power of work in the first 10 minutes of this game. McCartan wins the tap out. Oh, straight through the legs of Richie. Browning's outnumbered here. Blackaby in support. Gets it to him. And he's dragged off it, but they carried it out of the danger zone. In that little instance of play, Rob, too, it exemplified the speed that this new Norfolk side has, particularly the younger leagues. Brown and Wren passed Richie, and they just had no way, no way known was he going to catch it. Dean and McCartan, they'll be at each other all day. Taken by Holdsworth as he gets it to right. Beautifully played right. Off to Holdsworth now. Holdsworth into full forward. Dax got about 14 to beat. Couldn't do it, but he made an issue of it. Stevenson, however, comes away with the footy. And again, the Eagles run it out. Gary heads wide. And I think that's what they'll do for the majority of this first quarter because they're kicking into a howling breeze here at North Hobart. That was a terrific setup from defence by New Norfolk. They linked up beautifully, got themselves out of danger. Doing a good job. Over the back of the pack, Gurry. Deniman held on to Humphrey. His kick along the ground. It's still in play. He'll take it off the ball. Clarence players appealing for out on the full. The boundary umpire was right on the scene. Dean got a big task against McCartan. Doing it well at this stage. Hill uses his pace, runs into Horn. Uses it now across to the half forward flank, changes direction. Dean King out there, punched from behind. Running through was Richard, smothered by Corby. Brilliant work, White on his left foot. And Hull, tough. His handball smothered. Kicked by Isle up towards full forward. Fry, he comes out of defence and kicks it long towards the centre. Big long kick by Fry. Brown was the target. Oh, he almost dragged it in. Holdsworth lurking. Oh, great kick from Holdsworth. Cooning's running onto it. Higgins bearing down, and Higgins did well. Cooney under a lot of pressure and kicks it out of bounds on the full. The scissor kick from Holdsworth was pretty effective. Never seen so many more painted faces than I've seen here today. Plenty of colour in the crowd. Quayle kicks it up towards the wing. McCartan hasn't taken a mark yet. That's unusual. Humphrey starting to get into it. Looks to feed it off. Finds Wilton. Wilton kicks it in towards the middle. But the only man there was Scotty Wade. And he summed things up very well there on that occasion. 
might go long now, Scott Wade. Wade in towards full forward. Dak. Somehow he almost came out with it. But it's been tapped forward by David Young going up and down on the one spot, however. Richards charges at it, loses it, and then gets a free kick away, does he? Yes. Blackaby will take it on centre wing for the Eagles. My word, they beat terrific underneath the packs. His handball goes off to Quayle. Quayle's kick in towards uh, Browning. Oh, wonderful mark. Back deep, back to his judgment. Great courage. Chips it in towards full forward. Edwards from behind. Can't mark it. Over the back of the pack. McCallum almost out of bounds on the full. Well, deliberate. Deliberate. Use wrong choice of words, but certainly you were right, Rob. So it's a throw in. 30 metres out from New Norfolk's goal. Ritchie from behind. That from the Niffley. Blackaby has a shot at the goal. He kicked it straight. He kicked the goal. That's a good sign for them too, Bob. He did very well in the uh, first semi-final against Devonport where he kicked five and then picked importantly picked up possessions around the midfield area. But they've done very well. Two goals against what I would guess is probably a five-goal breeze. They're at the ball. They're really putting the Clarence ball carriers under pressure. And there's a couple of players running free. Noonan, Ritchie and Wade have not picked up anybody at all. And, of course, they're on the other side of the ledger. You've got Morby and uh, Stevenson are left free. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see which of those ploys is going to work for respective sides. But, Davey, uh, Dave, oh, importantly, you Norfolk have settled down pretty well. You would have anticipated a few nerves, but they've been good so far. As have Clarence Stevie Rudder with a free kick. I'll tell you what, he's on his game today. Well, he certainly lifted in the second semi too. He'd been out of sorts uh, for a number of weeks, but picked his form up in that uh, second semi-final. He's carried on with it. Great lead from Cullen. He gave Stevenson the, the slip. Stevenson made a contest of it late. Almost gave the free kick away. Cullen, though, at 50. Slipped over. Unfortunate for him because he was going for goal. Gentleman goes backwards to Wilton, a very underrated player. And Humphrey, I think, might be the key to this game if he keeps going the way he is at the moment. Poor kick though, why didn't I say that? He let me down. Jones in the centre, kicks to half forward. Where are the Clarence forwards? Dax the best bet at the moment. But the Eagles back there in numbers. And Stevenson with the clever little ball. Kicks out wide to Morby and or Horn. Pace probably with New Norfolk here. Morby picks it up. He's had a shave today. Thank goodness. Kicks it in towards the half forward flank. Wasn't a good kick, but Edwards taps it out towards Browning. If he gathers clean possession, he's right. Browning, eyes on the footy, caught high. And they've lost it. Picked up by Holdsworth, who's been busy. Wright's on his own on the wing. Got a reasonable bounce, but then he went to trouble. Gone! Eagles fans screaming for the kick, won't get it. It's kicked out in towards Danny Noonan. He's free now, but they're blazing long Clarence. Brownless, very planning the mark. Won't be there, this is dangerous. Cullen, the goal sneak, round the corner! With the post. Oh, it's a good game. Oh, it's just a wonderful game. The intensity is tremendous. And I think it's, a, you know, enormous credit to the New Norfolk players. They've really settled their back line down. Everybody's support, running in support. A short kick out finds Quayle. He chips one further out. A little bit dangerous, but work, who's worked extremely hard, got there in time. Out towards the wing. Over the back of the pack. Browning uses his pace. Bird tries to get to him. Did a good job. Held the play up. Browning butters up again. The ball knocked out. Underneath the pack there, Richie taking a bit high. He's going to get a free kick. Unbelievable decision, really. Browning, there were two free kicks on Browning, and then they plucked one out for Richie. Very inconsistent. You're not going from your Norfolk today, are you, Davis? No, Peter Richie's kick goes in short. He finds Adrian Dean. Dean hands it off to uh, Wade, who was under pressure. Edwards pops it high. Gets over to Dean King. He's got Hill. Hill kicks it back in towards the guys. Troy right there. He holds the ball up. It's underneath the pack. And knocked clear and knocked out of play by Hull. Just keep your eye on Eisel and Hull. There's Daniel Hull. Eisel and Richards. Oh, a bit of an open hand there from Eisel. Not much in it. Hull out of defence for Clarence. And they're the ones defending at the moment. But a tremendous mark for Matthew Jones. He's been around for a few years, but still only 21 years of, of age. Jones to half forward. Holdsworth's been good in the first 20 minutes of the 94 grand final. 3-2, 20. Clarence, New Norfolk, two straight goals, 12. Cullen the target here. But Stevenson takes the mark. And Blair Brownless thought about it, but pulled out. That's not his sort of game. 
They're running it out of defence pretty well. Blackaby has it now. He kicked their second goal, the youngster. And look at this, McCartan all on his own. He's got 20 metres, the big man. Kicks the half forward. Eisel's a chance if he keeps going. But they didn't talk well on that occasion. Clarence should clear. Hull, wild kick out towards the half forward line. Higgins knocks it forward. Beautiful footy. Chance for Edwards. Oh, he could have settled. But might be a marquee. No, knocked away by Richards. Heard under all sorts of pressure. Kicks it out wide. Holdsworth could have gone for the footy. Oh, clever tack from Richards. Fantastic stuff. But Denovan's got it. And the Eagles might clear it here. White now. Inborn hand pass. Shane Browning. 50 metres out and closing. Goes to full forward. Winter. Oh, great mark, Darren Richard. He's got a free kick as well. Well, you can't question his commitment to the ball. 50 metres has been played now against Richard Hill. He didn't come back off the mark when he was asked to, Bob. And Darren Winter will probably remind him of that too. So Winter's kick. He's got Cullen running free. So Cullen has moved into defence. Not a good kick up towards half forward. Donato did well. Got a push in the back. Wasn't paid. Wilton. The ball's tucked up underneath that pack. Five or six players trying to get it. Wilton and Wright. And Donato uh, ought to be careful there. So we'll have a ball up right on the 50 metre line. And Dean got a good hit out. Noonan got it further forward. Wilton working over time in defence. Looks for support. Out to Lee Horn. He's trapped. Heard. He gets the ball, brings it around, centres it in. He's got Stevie Wright sitting all on his own, 35 to 40 metres out from goal. A lot of poise shown by Young Hurd there. Lifted the eyes. And Stevie Wright, probably favoured by the wind. It'll come from left to right. Steadies has a shot at the goal. The umpire doesn't have to move very far. It's an excellent kick into this breeze. He would have had to start it out a little bit to the left to bring it around, but he certainly lifted the uh, the style of his game over the two finals games. Whilst we're only 25, 23 minutes into this first quarter, he's been amongst the possession getters. He's had five possessions for the quarter, and importantly, he's kicked a goal that's going to steady them just before they go into... In fact, he's kicked his two goals, but that one just before going into time on. An important factor now, Steve Wright, with his goal scoring, and Wade gets them out of the centre of the ground. In Norfolk, under siege here, it's very important for their prospects this afternoon. You'd expect that they hang on in the final five or six minutes of this first quarter. Clarence the other way. They want to really pour it on and use this five-goal breeze. 23 minutes of the first quarter gone. Bob Ketty, Gary Davidson and Rob Waters at the 1994 TFL Grand Final. Hope you're enjoying it statewide and live on ABC Sport. Lee Horn, high kick, it's a real up and under. In fact, it's going backwards. Oh, damn it, somehow, Mark, it's been paid. It went about 40 metres in the air, but five in lengthwise still. denham has got the footy. Bombs it in towards full forward. You know, folk, Mark, will be handy for the Eagles here at the moment. Clarence, of course, intent on stopping that. Hull and McCallum, those two desperados, and they head for the boundary line. Very, very tough defensive unit to crack this one. Hull, McCallum, Richards, Fry, Winter. They've been around for a long, long time and played together for the last couple of years now. Off the ground, though, all umpires in the way of Deniman. He holds it in, taps it to his advantage. Hill tries to create a pass, couldn't do it. Higgins, snap at goal. That would have brought the house down, missed to the right. Nonetheless, Rob, they've done extremely well in this 25-minute period uh, to be only 13 points behind when they really do have the advantage of a four to five goal breeze. So it's Richards who kicks out full back. He tries to the uh, centre of the ground. Richie couldn't control that ball. He runs onto it again. Adrian Dean gets his handball out. It's intercepted by Deniman. The ball's on the ground and underneath that pack, young Jones. Deniman wraps him up well and truly. Call for a ball up. They're alternating with the kick out. McCartan, Dean, the ball's on the ground. 
Heard tries to get the ball out of there, and once again it's wrapped up. And both back lines, as you said, Gary, have worked it very, very well, been very efficient, and it's very hard for uh, forwards to break clear. Fry gets the hit out. Jones taps it forward. The ball's on the ground. Dean King knocks it further forward. An opportunity for Humphrey. Oh, coming through was Richard's wonderful play. Dean King kicks it high, kicks it to the goals. Is it going to go through? What a sensational kick! Unbelievable kick and a great goal. The sort of thing that they really needed just before the quarter time siren. They sneak within seven points. And significantly, there's been a change for the Clarence side, and we didn't pick it up. Winter's gone into the forward pocket, and Cullen's gone onto that half back line to pick up um, uh, Dean King, who just snapped that goal. And that all happened in the process of the change. So, Winter in the forward line, unusual role. And don't forget the fact that he hasn't played for seven or eight weeks. Maybe one of the reasons why he's in that forward pocket. Also, Mike, we're trying to expose the lack of height back there. He's matched up on Jason Wilton, so it had a real advantage there. Hull goes forward for Clarence. Gains 30 metres for them. Donato, who's been good, kicked the goal. Oh, Stevie Wright's on offer. The hand pass wasn't good. And Wilton came out, left Winter and charged at the footy to save the day for New Norfolk. They were in real strife then. Rob, well, don't underestimate the strength of this North New Norfolk defence as well. They've stood up to it pretty well over the final series. We recognise Clarence's uh, strengths back there, but this young New Norfolk defence is doing pretty well as well. And free kick here is going to down. Winter Bowl looks hot. Yeah, Winter's going to take that uh, kick. And I think one of the other reasons he's in that uh, forward line is because uh, Wood was simply carving Clarence up down there. He had no opposition. Winter, you lane to the right. His kick's not a good one. Really didn't take enough time and set himself for that uh, shot at goal, and only a minor score. Stevenson will be the player to bring it back into play. Gone directly up the centre of the ground. He's going to be outnumbered by Clarence players. Punched back hard by uh, Holdsworth. Noonan further hit forward. Running onto the ball is Hull. He kicks it around the corner. There's no one at home. And he's going to beat Dean King and hits the behind post for a boundary throw in. Again, Clarence half back line proving dangerous. They don't mind backing themselves and getting themselves into a scoring position. We've seen that many times throughout the year. Clarence looking for goal number five. It'll be a real handy one for them as we're close to quarter time. In fact, almost 28 minutes now have gone of the first quarter of the 1994 grand final, which has opened up at a frenetic pace. No fisticuffs as such. They're just desperate at the footy. Great to see. Eight points the difference at the moment. McCartan tried to grab it. The Eagles are just trying to hold it in. And that's exactly what they've done. It's interesting, Gary, that uh, Humphrey and uh, Hill are changing at half forward. Humphrey now being picked up by uh, Hull. Yes, and we saw, and yet we saw Hill do so well as a permanent half forward last week. Somewhat surprising. McCart thumps it hard. Ritchie almost ran onto it. Winter tries to barge his way through around the corner. Ritchie, what a snap! What a goal! It's the one that the you Norfolk know, didn't want to see happen in the closing stages of the first quarter. And Ritchie spent a fair bit of time roaming unattended. Great snap from the boundary line, and very happy about it himself. But he started out as a loose man across that half-back line going into the centre bounce. You can see him gather, swivel onto that right foot and snap it through with the left. So Steve Wright's kicked two goals for Clarence. Singles to Richie, Dak and Donato, while for New Norfolk, the goals have been shared around all singles. Kicked out wide towards the wing. Here's Humphrey's been very good, the sentiment. Fitness down about him, but he looks spot on to me. And it'll be McCallum in the half back line. Callum playing back there in defence. He was just sensational when he came onto the ground in last year's grand final against North Launceston. Humphrey the fist, but it's been roped by Wright, who's playing very well again. And he's picked out Brownless. Well, they're coming in waves, but the, the hand pass. Wasn't good and off screen, Wilton and Winter going at it. Neither of those two will take a backward step. McCartan takes it off to Higgins. Higgins forced to centre it. Might work for them okay. Gets past Holm. Fry in the way though for Clarence. Nice little hand pass towards Wade. Going backwards. Gets it to Hurd. He tries to transfer it. 
danger here for Cullen if he gets a bad bounce. He does, but support arrives through McCallum. You know if they try and hold it in, or well, Cullum dives at the foot. He was caught high by Humphrey accidentally, but he's okay. And Winton and Wilton, Winter and Wilton still going at it. The country boy and the boy from Geelong. Winter, of course, last year's Daryl Baldock medalist. It's balled up at centre half back. Warby, quick snap out of the pack, in towards full forward. White traps it brilliantly, comes around on his left. He's got Browning, Browning smothered. Fantastic smother by Cullen, and the ball taken out of play. My word, what one wonderful football. At a quarter time, Clarence Reed, 5 3 33, New Norfolk, 3 1 19. Fantastic first quarter of football and honours pretty even really. Clarence have the break, but New Norfolk are kicking into a four or five goal breeze. So I suppose you could make a case that New Norfolk had the better of that first term, Gary Davidson. Well, I think they did, Rob. I think uh, despite the, the couple of goals late in the quarter, the Ritchie goal uh, particularly was one that hurt them badly. They, uh, they did it very, very well. The, the younger players settled down and it somewhat surprised me too, Rob and Bob, that the so-called heavies of the of the Clarence side uh, really didn't go at the younger players early. I thought I thought that was on the cards for cert, for sure that uh, they'd really have a go at the younger guys and try and break them up a little bit. But gee, they've stuck to their guns remarkably well. And uh, whilst they've grown in stature over the final series, I thought in that first 25, 28 minutes of the first quarter they've really come of age because uh, they're out there. They put their hand up, and to be uh, only a couple of goals out of it at quarter time, and knowing that they've got a good breeze behind their back. They're in with a good show of hitting the front in the second quarter. Jason Wilton, I thought, in his confrontation with uh, Darren Winter was terrific for New Norfolk. I think that was exactly what they uh, what they needed. And uh, it was interesting that Winter actually uh, decided that, that was enough. You know, he met his match. Yes, I think they've really they've put it up to Clarence and say, look, we're not going to be intimidated by you guys. We, uh, we know you're, you've got experience and you've won a premiership before, but we're here to take it away from you this year. And uh, so far, so good for the New Norfolk side. And... Uh, and take too much away from Clarence. They've played some pretty good footy under some fierce pressure from the New Norfolk side too. And uh, they've, they've got a handful of good players. Richie's starting to come into the game a bit. Holdsworth's been good early. Wright's been very good with a couple of goals and half a dozen possessions. And there's not a lot of difference in the possessions. In fact, both sides have had 47 kicks. New Norfolk are just leading 23 to 17 in the hand pass department. So there's not a lot in this game. Clarence have been able to kick a couple of goals. And significantly with the goals, all bar one, and, oh, sorry, two, count a mark from Stevie Wright and the free kick to Isle in the goal square, have all been kicked by snap. So you can see that they're all getting to the fall of the ball and making certain that they're down there in numbers with, uh, with the goal shooting process. Well, let's now have a look at a couple of the passages of play from the first quarter, fellows. And I think we're going to be taken through the first goal of the match. It was kicked by Paul Dack. Yes, and you can see that Morby didn't quite make connection with it, slipped at the last moment, and... The camera work was very good on that one. It was a point for mine. Definitely a point? Most definitely. OK, Clarence will take it. I think if we read about it in the paper tomorrow, we'll find that that was a goal to Paul Dack. Now, here's the fight Bob Ketty on in the goal square. And Michael Eisel kicked the Eagles first after uh, Darren Winter gave away a free kick then of 50. And that really settled the, easel, the Eagles down. And Bob, take us through this one. It's a great snap by this young man. Yeah, young Blackaby was a, was a fantastic uh, kick. And uh, Richie was the player who actually brought it back into play in defence and allowed Blackaby to, uh, to that snap at goal. Interesting with the Clarence setup here. Grant Fagan addressed the players first about a minute ago. And then Stevie Wright, the captain coach, gets some time to compose his thoughts, gather his thoughts, and then now he's addressing uh, the players. Is that common usage of the captain coach and the assistant coach who's up high in the clouds looking at tactics. I guess that Grant Fagan would be probably making the positional moves, if any, or determining who was actually picking up who. I, I guess he'd be saying to his players, look, you've got so-and-so, make sure you've got him covered, So you've got that one, and making certain that everybody is matched up. Now Stevie Wright would be coming in with the actual game plan stuff in terms of going against this breeze and hopefully keeping your Norfolk out. Now let's have a look at the goal kickers for you. For Clarence, Stevie Wright kicked two. He positioned himself very well. Dak kicked there first. Richie, an important one late in the scene. And Donato, who was pretty good early, has also kicked a goal. While for New Norfolk, all singles to Blackaby and King. They were two great snaps, just what they needed. And Eisel, you saw the goal that he kicked in about the first five or six minutes of the game. Statistics, Bob Kitty. 
Well, it's pretty even as far as the kicks and handballs are concerned. Only only six, uh, the difference in terms of possessions. Free kicks, well, you would expect there wouldn't be uh, that many in, in a grand final. Hitouts uh, favouring New Norfolk. McCartan, obviously, a key player in the midfield. Marks, well, it's not a day for high marks because of the win. Interesting that stat on McCartan. He's normally better around the ground than he is in the centre square breaks. Down to the boundary line, firstly, Chris Smythe. As you said, Grant Fagan, the dresser players first up, then Stevie Wright. Grant Fagan stressed upon them the need to actually play the top side this quarter. He wants their forwards to attack the ball and keep the ball in. He said they can't afford to let your Norfolk run. Uh, then Stevie Wright took over and he said finals are won by taking risks. Finals are won by the second effort. So little things, the Smothers, the Shepherds, they're pretty confident. They've won the first quarter. They want to win the second one. You're under a fair bit of pressure down there, Chris. Oh, look, it's just terrific, mate. The breeze is not too bad. I don't think it's four or five goals, as it is about seven or eight at the moment, but around about two on average. Thanks, Smythe. Down to John Kenny. And Darren Denneman was very wrapped in the performance of his players. He told them they had them on the run that quarter. They applied the pressure to them. A couple of times they turned the balls over and he said, now this is our quarter. This is where we really enjoyed it. He said, it's been fun. That was his word so far. But said, now it really gets underway. Thanks, John. And Clarence, though, take it out of the centre first and they kick it up towards the forward pocket area. Donato bumped off it by Quayle, who did pretty well. New Norfolk kicking with the breeze, and there's that man, Jason Wilton, who is fired up. Kicks towards the wing, and he's found Dean King. Huge breeze here today, and it's favouring the end of which New Norfolk are kicking. They're 14 points down. Winter was caught high, not going to get the free kick. Hill appealing for the free kick. Winter back in defence now. He's a loose man in defence, Rob. They've just let... Uh... Craig Stevenson float across that half back line, so he's loose in the New Norfolk defence. Darren Winter's gone down into the uh, inside the 50 metre semicircle to try and hold New Norfolk out this quarter. It's a ball up. Dean actually got the hit out. Browning tries to get his handball out. Lee Horn couldn't get it. Morby, quick kick forward. Dean off hands. Hill needs to get into the game. Couldn't quite control it. Backs onto it again. Cullen wraps him up. And we'll see a ball up about 45 metres out from the New Norfolk goal. Doug place to stand into the ground. Short ball up, McCartan in front, gets the first opportunity. Blackaby, quick hands out of the pack. Noonan couldn't wrap it up. Cullen takes it to the boundary line and Stevie Wright just tidies it up. So it's uh, going to be pretty hard, pretty tough for New Norfolk to get, to get it out of that mixture of players. Needed clear of the pack. Morby snaps one out, and uh, Stevie Wright once again has to take that ball to the boundary line. 14 points the difference, some anxious faces on the bench. And McCartan versus Dean. One more tap out, that one won by Dean though, but only as far as Stevenson, who'll get it towards Wilton, Cooney bearing down, good tackle. Higgins spun out, then into trouble. And I think these will always be the tactics of the side that's kicking against this breeze. They'll try and hold it up all day. It's the responsibility of the attacking side to try and open things up. And it's not easy. One by McCartan to Higgins. Again, his kick doesn't travel very far. Excellent hands from Stevie Wright. Goes back to his veteran rover. Wade, it took a long time. Back to Wright. They didn't gain much there. And the pressure tremendous from New Norfolk. Been very, very good. Stevie Wright, in fact, has taken it out of play three times in the last two minutes. Punched forward hard by Dean Jones against Dean King. It's out in space finally. Wright has an opportunity to kick, takes one a little bit late. And turning around Cooney, who really should have backed into that.